problem on campus or not. Let's bring in host of Left Coast News, Ethan Behrman, and the founder of Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk, who was at the president's event today. Welcome to both of you. Thanks, Thanks Shannon. All right, I want to play a little bit more about what the president had to say about why he signed this order today. Under the guise of speech codes and safe spaces and trigger warnings, these universities have tried to restrict free thought, impose total conformity, and shut down the voices of great young Americans like those here today. It's great people. All of that change is starting right now. All right, Ethan, why not require colleges that get federal funding into the billions to actually certify that they're going to make sure that regardless of viewpoint, everybody has a space to share on campus? Well, the ACLU said it perfectly. They already have that requirement uh, under the First Amendment. This was a nice red meat move to the base to get them excited about something. There were all of nine conservative speakers uninvited last year, according to FIRE, while 20 universities actually signed on to the University of Chicago standard for open debate. This is much ado about nothing, but it sure excites some on the right. All right. Well, you can see the pictures there on campus. I mean, things that have actually happened. I mean, Charlie, you have been personally involved in some of these things that have happened. But I want to read something that Ted Mitchell, the president of the American Council on Education, was quoted as saying. He says, no matter how this order is implemented, it's neither needed nor desirable and could lead to unwanted federal micromanagement of the cutting edge research that is critical to our nation's continued vitality and global leadership. He, like Ethan, Charlie says, um, it's a problem, a solution in search of a problem. Well, well, look, I, I can tell you firsthand, this is a crisis happening on college campuses. Just this last semester, uh, I wasn't allowed to speak at two universities, um, Cornell University and DePaul University, because they cited safety concerns. I spoke at University of California, Berkeley last spring, and we had to spend over $15,000 for security just to allow us to have our viewpoint uh, expressed. What happens here is far too often universities will cite security concerns as a way to suppress differing opinion. And look, this is not just a conservative issue. I, Ethan, I want you to be able to talk too. I want all different opinions to be able to be heard. College campuses should be a marketplace of ideas. And it is inarguable that colleges tend to be more to the left and everybody should allow their opinion to be heard. And the president said it so brilliantly. Only people that are not confident in their beliefs seek to censor others. And this executive order uses taxpayer dollars, our money, as a way to ensure that the universities are protecting the First Amendment rights of all students, regardless of political viewpoint. Well, Ethan, and you saw the tape that we had leading into this, so students who said that they didn't think offensive speech should be protected. We've seen polling that's similar for the younger generation. Um, but we all know that the First Amendment is not about protecting speech that's popular and wonderful or we wouldn't need it. And I think about um, the, um, the Baptist Church, I'm forgetting the first name of them, but we all know the one, well, yes, Westboro Baptist Church, the one that is out there with the horrible signs. We can't even show them on TV because they're so bad. They got an 8-1 decision at the Supreme Court protecting them. I mean, do you think young people don't understand that they're going to have to listen to speech they don't like? Well, there's, there's two different issues there. One is whether or not the university is trying to restrict speech. The other is whether or not students actually understand the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. I actually agree with Charlie on the issue that I fight viciously, advocately, uh, very loud, I should say, for First Amendment rights. But the issue here, and I'm, I'm going to challenge Charlie on something. So if you're so worried about free speech, are you going to denounce Congressman Devin Nunes's defamation lawsuit trying to shut down speech and parody speech and Twitter? That's wrong. He's attacking the First Amendment. I advocate well, for the First Amendment and fight Twitter's for people's not rights. Taxpayer we, should be, we should be <laughs> denouncing him. Will you denounce him right now, Charlie? Well, well, first of all, Twitter's not taxpayer funded. I think that's a fundamental difference. No, no, no. The, the, the First these, Amendment you know, is the. Hang on. No, no. The First well, Amendment. Hold on a second. He Twitter is a taxpayer funded. But, but listen, when it, comes to, LV, when it comes Hustler, to Twitter, people want to have it. Section 230. When, when it comes to what Twitter, though. What about Congressman Nunez's law? When, when it comes to Twitter, first of all, one of his main problems is that he says they're shadow banning, that they're shutting down speech, is what I, what I assume. No, but I know the yeah, parody accounts are there as well. No. But when it comes to Twitter, people want to argue it both ways. They want to argue that it's a public forum, but it is a private company. So people who want it shut down or want to control it have to remember it, at this point it is still Shannon, considered a private country or co company Shannon, it is you know it is not a you government know Hustler entity. v Falwell I do that is that is parody of a public figure that is protected so Devin Nunez's cow can tweet whatever they want about Devin Nunez including his okay, mom's a, account that and is well, that well, aside uh, we know the cow account is very popular but Charlie I want to bring you back in here because as you're saying, like the, they're not receiving federal money into the billions as most college campuses across this country are, 
And should the government not have a say in what happens there, they're not trying to force some new um, obligation onto these colleges. They're just trying to say, you got to treat everybody fairly. No, and this happens far too often. I can't tell you how many groups of Turning Point USA and other groups we work with that are on the conservative side that don't even want to invite certain speakers because they don't want to go through the bureaucracy and the university pushing back to try to not allow these viewpoints to be heard in the first place. And this is something that should have universal agreement. I could tell you hundreds and hundreds of times a year, we go up against university administration, moving meeting spaces, trying to appease the protesters, trying to make to cite security concerns. This, this executive order, make sure the university does everything they possibly can to allow all ideas to be heard, have that marketplace of ideas. And to the other point is, yes, you have to hear ideas that you might not agree with. And if you don't agree with them, you can walk out of the room. These, this really focuses on voluntary speech. We're not telling students you have to go to these, these events, but if you actually look at the best attended and the most enthusiastic campus events, sometimes they're the conservatives that come on campuses. When I come on campus, or Ben Shapiro, and many of these other voices, and I think, Ethan, we can agree that college campuses should should be a place where you might have to hear something you disagree with. And I think you also agree right now they tend to go to the left. This executive order liberates right. college campuses to be that marketplace and of I ideas. I do think genuinely, Charlie, that Ethan would fight for your right to go there and to have these speeches and do those things. I think Good. you both actually would agree on that, which is an important point for American discourse. Ethan and Charlie, thank you both. Great to see you both. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. All right, breaking news.